me so, but he would desire the truth when we when, when he sees the strangeness of our salvation. Because we're going to be saved. Lord willing, go on, brother. So John 8 and 44, so it says, Ye are of your father the devil, the lust of the father you will do. Mm -hmm. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Yeah, Yahweh Shah was basically telling the, the, the Pharisees that ye are your father the devil. In other words, because who set those Pharisees up, that church up and the head of Israel? Um, uh, uh, the Roman the Roman government set them up. So they were doing the bidding of their father the devil, which is Esau. Okay, go on. So it says, um, he was a murderer from the beginning. There going all no, the way back to Cain, go on. Because there is no truth in him. Because there is no truth in him. You see? But they're going to consider something that they never have. So let's continue on with that, brother. Uh, so from verse 6 again, it says, uh, Therefore we have erred from the way of truth, mm. and the light of righteousness have not shined unto us. Because Esau looks into every little thing, man. And anything that anything that, that's actually beneficial, man, they, they, they go and seek their way to go and get that thing and keep it and get, gather as much of it as they can, whether it's money or other resources. But they're going to consider the benefits, the, the, the supreme benefits of the truth. And that's going to hurt them inside. It's going to hurt them. Because they already hurting right now just by us waking up, standing, standing before them and telling them they're down for. But they're really going to be hurt when they see the truth in full effect on how we're the people of the saints, okay? And that we're being saved. Go on, brother. Uh, verse 7, uh, let's like it, finishing off 6, it says, And the sun of righteous, righteousness rose not upon us. Mm. We, re we wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness Hurt. and destruction. Hurt. Go on, brother. Yea, we have gone through deserts where, where there lay they no, no way. way. They went to Afghanistan, they went to Baghdad under this false notion of 9-11 and, and uh, Saddam Hussein. You know, he has people that has links with uh, weapons of mass destruction. So they did all of this nonsense to expand their empire and it got them to where? To this point as it stands right now, to our salvation and later for their destruction. Go on, brother. No, no, no it said son, son of son of righteousness, son. It um, speaks about the morning of our kingdom. That's gonna be established in righteousness. The morning, that's where the sun comes in. The, yep. um, the, the morning the sun, the morning rises with the sun. So that's going to be established in righteousness. Yep. That's how you know uh, the, uh, you know, the morning is, is going to be righteousness. Exactly. Yeah, keep going. It says, um, Yea, we have gone through deserts where there, where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. But, but as for the way of the Lord, we have not known. So you see, when you read this, now they're considering, oh, the Lord. We should have known the ways of the Lord when they see us being saved. That's when they're going to consider everything that we've been saying and consider what we have. And they're going to find it precious. But old oh boy, it's too late. Okay, it's too late now. <laughs> and it wasn't meant for you to receive this, man. They're going to actually, Esau is literally going to actually see the precious of this truth, the preciousness of this truth that we have. Right now, they don't see it. But that's okay. Let them be, let them be deceived in their own way so that they can simply destroy themselves because they're only doing us a favor by them being deceived. The scripture says that the deceive and the deceive are freaking his, man. That's right. Okay, go on, brother. And also, this pertains to um, the one third, uh, the, the two thirds as well, man. Exactly, yeah, because they come in in that same mindset. Go on. It says, uh, verse, verse eight. It says, "What have pride profited us, or what good have riches with our vaunting brought us? Yeah. All those things are passed away like yep. a shadow, and as a post that hasted by." Yeah, because, oh yeah, keep going. And as a ship that uh, that passes over the waves of water, which when it is gone by, the trace thereof cannot be found. It cannot be found anymore. Neither the pathway of the keel in the waves. Neither the pathway of the keel in the waves. You see it, and then you don't see it anymore. So this is why it says in the book of Job, the 20th chapter, if Esau mount up to their excellency, he shall perish away forever like his own dump. Meaning, like for example, when you take a shirt, you don't want to see that shit no more. You flushing that down the toilet. Once you flush it down the toilet, you don't see it no more. Okay, it's gone for good. So all of the great things that Esau did, his great civilizations, because this is a great civilization. It's a great civilization. I'll call it what it is. Ancient Rome was a great civilization. The Greek Empire was a great civilization. But guess what? All of that is going to be forgotten about. That's going to be a thing of the past. 
what will be remembered is the works that we've done. That's why we're also known as, what is it, Mount Zion. I'm not talking about the works that we've done in this day and age, but prior. Now when you look at the term um, Zion, it's from the Hebrew word to Zion, which means a monument, something to remember. So we're always going to be something to remember. The works of the other nations, that's not going to be remembered anymore. Okay? What's going to be remembered is the works that we've done. Go on, brother, forever. I'm just going to jump down a bit. Um, verse 14, it says, For the hope of the ungodly is like dust that is blown away with mm. the wind, like a thin froth that yep. is driven away with the storm, yep. like as the smoke which is dispersed here and there with the, with the tempest. Because they, they're hoping is in two things that comes to my mind. They hope that they can continue on forever. They hope that the law don't come back. They hoping, man. They hoping for those two main things. And this is why they're doing all that they can and getting their space military prepared to fight the Lord. Because they know they're in shit. Esau knows that they're in trouble, man. All right, when they see those showers, they, they already know what it is. Like, for example, look at King Herod. King Herod knew what it was when he saw the, the, the chariot on, in the east and he sent his men, his, uh, his, his, his wise men down there to go see what was going on with the sun. You see, because he, they, they knew at the time that a Messiah was going to come. That's why he, he sent his soldiers to go kill all of the Hebrew boys. Project Megiddo, no? Project Megiddo. That's <coughs> um, King Herod, he basically represents the elites, man. Mm -hmm. King Herod represents the wicked elite. They, they know, they, 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 they know. That's why they made the movies about Judgment Day, about a big mountainous chariot overshadowing the whole pla pla planet, man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They know, they know what's going on in the radar systems, what's being picked up on the radar systems. Yep. The chariots, man. They were, when the brothers did the, I sent them to the brothers, man. There's a big mothership, man, uh, uh, coming towards planet Earth, man. Yeah, it can't. Planet, yeah, this I saw that. planet Earth is like this small, the chariot, the big, the massive circular chariot. There's yep. like a cross, a crucifix in yeah. the middle of it, man. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. heading towards planet Earth. Yep. So they, 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 they know Yahweh Shah's on his way, man. You yeah, know? they they, are, they know what it is. And they hoping like hell that he don't come, but he's coming. Yeah, so okay. they, they, they're trying to blot out any chance of um, their rulership being overthrown, man. Okay, mm. because at least they got everything on lockdown. They're sitting they're sitting in their seats of, of you know, their little, this, their, you know, their meetings. They know what's going on. They know they got everything on lockdown. Yeah, they do. The one thing that they don't have on lockdown is the scriptures, right. the, the fulfillment of what's going on here. Yeah. They, they try to lie about it, they try to cover up the truth, they try to uh, 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 get Jake into a degradable state of uh, uh, booty shaking, twerking, gangster culture, uh, uh, strip culture, they try to get us bugged out so there's no way that we could come back to our culture, you know, but somehow we came, there's, there's prophets in the streets, there's, there's prophets in the streets, and plus they're seeing the chariots on the radar system, so they're, they're getting kind of shook, they're thinking, oh, we, how do we control this? How can we get this under control? Because you got everything else under control. We, we, we set the virus out. We've, um, you know, we're trying to crash the system. Okay, we've got, we set up the FEMA camps. So we know we've got everything on the wrap. But the only thing that we don't is these, these, these fucking chariots, man. These, these, they're appearing out of nowhere. How do we get all of this under control? That's the one thing that they don't have under control. So that's why I think they're gonna, they're gonna let loose on us, man. Like how King Herod did. Um, Back, back all those thousands of years ago, <coughs> on um, on the on the children, the sons of Jerusalem, man. He's gonna yeah. do that again. That's not. Uh, that's what's it. Um, there's nothing new under the sun. Under the sun. Yeah. So I mean, and, and the reason why they did that because they knew a savior was gonna come among among the Hebrew males. So they so they were sent down into to, to try to kill as much as they can, they can kill, but not knowing that Yahweh Shai was sent as a baby to Egypt because there was a, a an Israelite community in in, in Egypt. Okay, so that's it, that's it on that. Yeah, so yeah, continue on where, where you left off at. Who is reading? Um, I still got some a little bit. Okay, yeah, yeah, come, come. Uh, verse 17, he says, He shall take him. That's no, like verse 16. No, verse 15, sorry. It says, But the righteous live forevermore. Their reward also is with the Lord, and the care of them is with the Most High. Right, it says that the righteous live evermore, and that their care is, is, is with him, the Most High and even their reward. So our hope and what we expect is forth to come. But the hope of the wicked doesn't exist. It's just in their mind and it's something that they want to fulfill, but they, it won't be fulfilled because it's not substantiated by the spirit of the Lord. Okay, go on brother. 
It says, therefore, shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. For with his right hand shall he cover them, and with his arm shall he protect them. Yeah, with his, with his right hand he shall, uh, what is it? He shall cover he shall cover them and with his arm he shall protect them. Mm -hmm. He shall take him he shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor yep. and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. Exactly. So we're gonna be taken care of. We're gonna be delivered and saved. That's what it means by uh his right hand covered us. Alright? So that's really the end result. The end result is is, is, is simply this man. Esau He has nothing to hope for. It's not a prayer, heaven or in hell, which we're in right now, we're in hell, that can save his ass for what's to come. And this is why he's doing all that he can do, like you said, brother, about the massive, massive you afford us on the radar. He's just trying to find any form of way. And I and I think that's and I think that's the reason as to why. You know, they keep promoting this coronavirus thing. Because maybe they do see the Lord coming and they don't really want to prepare the minds of the people of what's to come. Yeah. Okay? And like I said, I'm not saying that this coronavirus is not real. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know. And, and to really be honest, my personal opinion is that I think it's a, it's a virus scare that they're trying to use on the people to get people, um, you know, off balance and and focus on something rather than what they really should be focusing on. You know, that's just my my personal opinion. But it could also be real too. I'm in the middle when it when it comes to this virus thing, man. Mm -hmm. It helps push the the RFID shit. Cunt at yeah, the yeah. same time, but let's just say if it's a lie, and if they keep this scare going, then they're gonna, like you said, brother, they're gonna push the microchip, and that's gonna lead to the end of this world. So it's all, it's all good anyway. It's all beautiful. Yeah, say um, you got Iran at the moment is um, saying they're putting out there that America might have put this out as a chemical, you know, as Cunt. a biological, biological warfare. Warfare. Yeah. 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 So you know, it's all either, good. Either way, it's to, it's to scare the people. Yep. It's all, it's all good, baby boy, whether it's real or if it's a lie. Because Esau is very good when it comes to, like we always talk about, psychology, you know? And I think, as I'm going to say again, I think that this is nothing but a psychological operation. Short for the, this is why people say the term sign, you know, which just makes it short, you know? But that's all it is, man. But it's all leading up to, to where we wanted to go. Go on, brother. You got some more now? Yeah, might as well just finish it. Yeah, hold on, brother. It says, um, verse 8, uh, Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 18, it says, He shall put on the righteousness as a breastplate and true judgment is, instead of an helmet. He shall take holiness for, invincible, for an invincible shield. Mm. His severe wrath sh shall he sharpen for a sword, and the world shall fight with him against the unwise. Right, and the world shall fight against him with the unwise. So like you're with him against the unwise. Oh, against the unwise. Yeah, because you're going to have this war in heaven. That's going to occur, which is spoken of in Revelation the 12th chapter, in 2nd Ezra 13 as well, where all of these, all of the angels of Esau, and I'm talking about, you know, these jet fighting planes and what have you, they're going to be looking to fight against the Lord that day. And they're going to lose that war miserably. Because here it is, according to what is Exodus, uh, I believe it's um, Exodus 15 and 3, where it says he is, a, he is a man of war. Somebody get me that, Exodus 15 and 3. So Esau is going to fight up against a god of war. Check that out. How can you defeat a, 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 a god of war? Knowing that he's first and foremost, he's all-knowing for one. And if he's all-knowing for one, he would know every little thing about war. Okay? He's the father of, of, of warriors. Yeah. I made a video about that. Come on. Yeah. Get going, brother. This is Exodus 15 and 3. The Lord Yahweh Yahweh Shai is a man of war. Mm, mm, mm. Lord Yahweh is his name. Right, the Lord Yahweh is his name. So mm. that's what Esau is going to be fighting up against. A man of war. And Esau ain't really that much of a man of a war. I mean, he may know a little, a little something, something that the Lord gave him, but he don't know everything about war. So he's yeah. going to be wiped out, man. Yeah. All right? Like the, 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 the things that you use for war is stealth. And, um... Obviously, strength and power, and the Lord got all of that. Strategy. Strategy. Come on, go on. And the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 15. Thine almighty word leaped down from heaven out of thy royal throne mm. as a fierce man of war. As a fierce man of war. Into the midst of a land of destruction. So Yahweh Shai is going to come, come, come from out of his throne, okay? 
and, 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 and go towards to fight against Esau with this war. Okay, and he's gonna come fierce. And another, and another uh, tactic of war is intimidation. <laughs> so when Yahushua comes back, he's gonna intimidate these people that's gonna try to fight up against him. Right. <laughs> come on, bro. Like for example, I don't cut you, brother. Like uh, Mike Tyson, what Tyson would do whenever he's fighting up against his opponent, when he used to fight, he used to look at his opponent dead in his eye to see if they, if he could trace some kind of uh, yeah. intimidation in them. Yeah, yeah. And once he, once he found out that his, uh, his opponent was intimidated by him, he won the fight. <laughs> so it's all psychological, man. And the Lord already got that. That knowledge and understanding down. Go on, brother. I might just say something on that point. Um, I think it's Mike Tyson who said that everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Yep. So Esau's got all his plans and his <laughs> yeah, until they get laser right. <laughs> but when you have a shot comes, it's all gonna go out the window. Yep. Yeah, did you put it? Yeah. 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 I don't need to knock up I don't need to say any more. <laughs> Go on, brother. So say um and brought down unfeigned commandment as a sharp sword mm. and standing up filled all things with death okay and it touched the heaven where it stood upon the earth right if you want to break that down you go right on that right because um then almighty world leaped down from heaven out of that royal throne as a fierce man of war into the midst of a land of destruction and brought down and feigned commandment as a sharp sword mm. and standing up filled all things with death and it touched the heaven but it stood upon the earth right because yahweh shai was the was the angel of death um 3,000 plus years ago when we were cap uh, captives in our ancient Egypt. Yep. Okay, he was he was the angel of death. Okay, and he's coming back again the same time. Okay, but he's he's gonna um bring he's gonna come about not as a man, but he's gonna come about in in an angelic, uh, militarized formation. Okay, so when so when he did that, the Lord didn't come. He's not gonna come down this time out of that royal throne and fill the land with death. He's gonna be in a chariot. Zapping, bringing fire, you know what I'm saying? He said, um, what did he say? He said, um, what did it as it goes, um, behold, he cometh for fire, and um, what I do, what did he say? For behold, he cometh for fire, and his chariots, what did he say? Isaiah 66 and 58. How does it go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. always used to bring that, that's the old, that's the old, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to bite the dust. How can I forget that? Like a whirlwind. Wait, 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 we go, we got a precept to back up what you're saying, he ain't gonna come as a man. Isaiah 47 and 3, thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah.